Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. As you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, this is going to be July through September book releases I'm excited for, aka books that I like have heard a bunch of things about and I'm interested in reading it or books that are from authors that I've loved or series that I'm continuing. I'm obviously sitting at my desk here with my bookshelf behind me because with life, things have just piled up in front of the bookshelf and I don't know where the fuck to put half the things. So um, this is where this is going to be filmed. I'm really hoping that for my next video after this, that is like a sit down video, I will be in my normal background because the next day that I have off of work, I am planning on doing a bunch of cleaning. Uh, but that is completely irrelevant to this. Um, so there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven books that I am interested in. Will I read any of these? Mm, some of them I might because a couple of these I do have pre-ordered and we'll talk about those as I get to them and actually I think one of them I have an arc for. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right in and I will be looking at my laptop which is right behind you um, to kind of see the dates and read you out, read you out the description of the book if I don't know a lot about it or yeah. Um, so the first book is Shut Out by Avery Keelan and it comes out July 1st. Goodreads says June 1st, but it's not out yet. It's July. Amazon says July. Um, but this basically is a hockey romance. Um, it's uh, the second book in the like Offside universe, which Offside um, I read earlier here in June and I'm like sitting here like I need more by this author I need to read this I need more in this world and in this series and so I'm just gonna read the description from Goodreads after my life goes sideways in the middle of sophomore year I'm forced to move in with my older brother and two of his hockey teammates I'm less than thrilled at the idea of living with three athletes and their stinky gear their rotating door of hookups and their tendency to inhale every snack in the house when I walk in the front door with an armload of boxes, I'm faced with another problem entirely. Hades. One of my new roommates is the tall, tattooed stranger from my one night stand on Halloween. So I'm guessing it's going to kind of be like second chance-ish, of course, of like one night stand on Halloween and then now having to live with him. And I'm just sitting here like, that sounds amazing. Um, I loved Offside and I gave it five stars like I loved it um, and so I really hope I love this. The next book is Forget Me Not by Julie Soto and I'm just gonna read like the um, tagline of this which is just what sold me on this is an ambitious wedding planner must work with her grumpy florist ex whose heart she broke on the most high profile wedding of her career in the spicy and emotional romance from popular fanfic author Julie Soto. I heard wedding planner florist they were exes and now it's going to be a second chance like that just sounds amazing of like exes she broke his heart and now they have to work together for their jobs and it's like this high profile thing and it's just like i love the idea of a second chance romance and i haven't really read that many so i am excited for this also the cover like i pretty much saw the cover saw that tagline and went I want to read that and this comes out on July 11th and then on July 18th is A Soul of Ash and Blood by Jennifer L. Armitrout and so basically this is the fifth book in the Blood and Ash series the first book is from Blood and Ash which I honestly should have grabbed because I own it but um this is basically like we are hearing about um the events from book one through book four I believe through a different character's point of view so in the first book from Blood and Ash, we are following the the maiden named Poppy and basically she cannot be looked upon, she cannot be touched really. And she ends up getting this new guard named Hawk and instantly she wants to change all that stuff. And it's ultimately a lot there than that. There's political things, um, there's essentially vampires, werewolves, dragons, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and so in A Soul of Ash and Blood, essentially you are seeing, I know it's at least book one, but I think it's book one through book four from, or at least book three, because book four you see his point of view, but book one through book four in the love interest point of view, 
um and like the tagline is just only his memories can save her um and i'm really excited from the for this because i love this series like i am trash for it like are the books amazingly written mm, not really but do i eat that shit up and do I just, do, do I have this pre-ordered? Yes, yes I do. I have it pre-ordered and I will be reading it as soon as it arrives. AKA I will be reading this in the end of July probably. Next we are into August releases, which on August 8th is Cruel Seduction by Katie Robert. This is the fifth book? Is it the fifth book? Yes, it's the fifth book in the Dark Olympus series. I couldn't remember if this was book four or book five. <laughs> it's book five. I haven't read book four. I should though, bef obviously before I read book five. And so this is basically like a modern Greek retelling of Aphrodite, Hephaestus, Pandora, and Adonis. Am I pronouncing that right? I'm not sure. Um, and it is this like open poly knot and it is going to end up being very smutty like all the books in the Dark Olympus series are. And again, it's basically like this modern Greek retelling. And so yeah, that's pretty much all I know. That's all I want to know. I like going into the Dark Olympus books knowing basically the couple and um, like a couple tropes. And that's pretty much it. Um, and so I am really excited for this because like, even though I've only read the first three books, I haven't read book four. I love the first three. I have a feeling I will love book four and so and I have a feeling I will love this. And on August 22nd is Unexpecting by Jen Bailey. This, I'm pretty sure I have an arc on neck galley of, um, but I honestly don't remember that much besides except reading the description and going, oh, that sounds, that sounds interesting. First of all, the tagline is Juno meets Heartstopper in this poignant and emotional story about fan family, what it means to be a parent and falling in love. Benjamin Morrison is about to start junior year of high school and while his family is challenging, he's pretty content in life with his two best friends and being part of the robotics club until an experiment at science camp has completely unexpected consequences. He is going to be a father, something his mother was not expecting after he came out as gay and, he, and she certainly wasn't expecting that he would want to raise the baby as a single father. But together they come up with a plan to prepare Ben for fatherhood and fight for his rights. The weight of Ben's decision presses down on him. He's always tired, his grades fall, and tension rises between his mom and stepfather. He's letting down his friends in the robotics, robotics club whose future hinges on his expertise. If he wasn't for the renowned friendships and maybe more with a boy from his past, he wouldn't be able to face the daily ridicule at school or the crumbling relationship with his best friends. With every new challenge, every new sacrifice he has to make, Ben questions his choice. He's lived with a void in his heart where a father's presence sh should have been, and the fear of putting his own child through that keeps him clinging to his decision. When the baby might be in danger, Ben's faced with a heart-wrenching realization. Sometimes being a parent means making hard decisions, even if they're the choices you don't want to make. And at first, when I first read that description, I was like, mm -hmm. But then I was kind of like, but wait, that's going to be a very interesting story to read because of it's like, y you don't really see in books teen parents. And not that I am saying that like, we need more of that because when in doubt, no teen needs to end up being a teen parent. That is kind of my stance. Um, teens need to be teens, but I feel like this book could show teens that it's not as beautiful as you think, even in books. Um, and I am interested in it and it is also queer. So when I know that's kind of ultimately why I originally was like, ooh, that looks interesting. And then it's like, it'll have a lot, it'll have a lot of like mature and interesting conversations discussed within the book, I think. And that's kind of why I'm intrigued. I just filmed talking about the last, about two books and I wasn't filming. So let's go back to do those. So on August 29th is Never a Hero by, by Vanessa Len, which is the sequel to Only a Monster, which in Only a Monster, we follow Joan, who basically ends up finding out that her family are monsters, which basically are like people with powers, um, and they also can travel through time. We also meet Nick, who is a monster hunter, and Aaron, who is a monster, and basically this ends up being a giant thing where we're like going through time and doing things and all of that and I fairly enjoyed the first book I think I gave it like 3.5 stars just because I didn't love how it ended but obviously a sequel answers 
what's gonna happen um and so i am excited for this i have the fairy loot special edition ordered because my copy of only a monster is the fairy loot edition because it was one of the books that i got when i had fairy loot um and so i was like i kind i do want to read never a hero so might as well have my editions match did my bank account like that idea no but do i aesthetically like the idea yes um and so obviously i'll be reading it whenever my fairy loot copy shows up insert editing me forgetting to talk about a book um, and that is Soul of a Witch by Harley Leroux, which is the third book in the Souls trilogy, I think. Souls is the series title, I'm not too sure. And this basically is a like adult paranormal where we are following, I believe, a witch and a demon. Um, and that's pretty much all I know. Um, I did really enjoy the first two books in the series, so of course... I'm reading the third one and this comes out on August 31st. And on September 5th is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. I'm going with that's how it's pronounced. And this originally was a kind of TikTok series where um, basically the author did almost like these little skits of sorts of like her character Evie being an assistant to the villain. And I'm just going to read the description because I wouldn't be able to describe this injustice. Assistant Wanted, notorious high-ranking villain, seeks loyal level-headed assistant for unse unspecified office, off, office duties, supporting staff for random mayhem, terror, and other dark things. In general, this Russian must excellent benefits. With ailing family to support, Evie Sage's employment status isn't just important, it's vital. So when a mishap with Renata... Renadon's most infamous villain results in a job offer, naturally she says yes. No job is perfect, of course, but even less so when you develop a teeny tiny crush on your terrifying, temperamental, and undeniably hot boss. Don't find evil so attractive, Eve Evie. But just when she's getting used to severed heads suspended from the ceilings and the odd squish of an er errant eyeball beneath her heel, Evie suspects this dungeon has hu has a huge rat and not just a literal kind because some because something is growing rotten in the kingdom of Renadon and and someone wants to take the villain and his entire nefarious empire out now Evie must not only resist drooling over her boss but figure out exactly who is sabotaging his work and ensure he makes them pay after all a good job is hard to find and so I'm excited for this because I've watched the TikTok series I've followed the author on TikTok for probably over a year at this point, maybe closer to two years, if I'm being honest, like a year and a half at least. And I'm very excited for this. I feel like I'm really gonna enjoy it. Um, and it also is a thing where the villain is the love interest, which when in doubt, uh, sign me the fuck up. And on September 12th is Fall of Rune and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Yes, there's two Jennifer L. Armentrout books on here. And I'm going to say this, I actually don't know what the fuck this is about. I haven't read the description, so we're going to read it together. Do I think I, do I have this pre-ordered or did I say I wanted to pre-order it and never did? I don't remember. Um, if I don't have it pre-ordered, I'll probably buy it closer to the time. Um, but she lives by her intuition. He feeds on her pleasure. Long ago, the world was destroyed by gods. Only nine cities were spared, separated by vast wilderness teeming with monsters and unimaginable dangers each city is now ruled by a guardian royalty who feed on mortal pleasure born with an intuition that never fails Callista knows her talents are of great value to the power to the power hungry of the world so she lives hidden as a court courtesan is that how that said of the baron of archwood in exchange for her, his protection she grants him information when her intuition leads her to save a traveling prince in dire trouble, the voice inside her blazes with warning and promise. Today he, he'll, today he'll bring her joy. One day he'll be her doom. When the Baron takes an interest in the traveling prince and the prince takes an interest in Callista, she becomes the prince's temporary companion. 
But the city simmers with rebellion, and with knights and monsters in a glass city and a hungry prince in her bed, intuition may not be enough to keep her safe. Callista must follow her intuition to safety or follow her heart to to her downfall. Okay, that, that sounds better than I thought it was going to be. It's a fantasy romance, and I'm like, sign me up for that. That's all I need to hear. Like, sign me up. I, I will be checking to see if I have this pre-ordered, and if not, I will be pre-ordering it, even though, can I afford it? That'll be future me's worry. And the next book is honestly the one I think I'm the most excited for in this, like, period of time, is The Chalice of the Gods by Rick Riordan, which is the technically, in some ways, the sixth book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I love the Percy Jackson series. I read it the, for the first time in 2019, immediately fell in love, and then I reread it in 2022 and loved it just as much. And so I'm really excited for this because this is basically, you are following the events of um, the original Percy Jackson series, the Heroes of Olympus series, and I believe you're following after the Trials of Apollo series too, as you're basically following Percy Jackson, who is half human, half demigod, as he's trying to have a normal senior year in high school. Th thus, um, does that happen? No, because this book is happening. And so yeah, that's pretty much all I know about it. That's all I want to know. I refuse to read the description of this book, but it comes out on September 26th. And the next book, which also comes out on September 26th, is The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab, which is the first book in the sequel series um, to the A Darker Shade of Magic series. Um, so I don't really want to say anything about the, frag the Fragile Threads of Power because A, I don't know, and B, I don't want to spoil something. So I will just explain what A Darker Shade of Magic is, which uh, that is basically like a historical-ish fantasy where basically there are these four Londons, red, white, black, and gray London. And basically like we follow a Antari named Cal, which is basically an Antari is somebody that can travel within all of these like dimension, like with all these different worlds. And on one of these times when Cal ends up going through, like from one London to the other, he brings something with him that he shouldn't, and that causes a giant series of events. And now I want to reread A Darker Shade of Magic because this comes out in September, and I need to reread that series before I read The Fragile Threads of Power, which I am excited for. I really like the A Darker Shade of Magic series. Technically, I think it's Sh Shades of Magic is technically the series title, I think. Um, and so I am excited for this because I love the world that was created and I do really want more. And this, I think we are in a different London than we were before, like a darker shade of magic like that series mostly takes place in, I think, red London and gray London um, with hints of the of white and black in there, too. But I think this, by the looks of it, takes place mostly in White London, or at least the main character is from White London, which I'm very intrigued because if you've read the series, you know kind of, you might get why I'm intrigued by somebody from White London. Um, and if you haven't read the series, what I'm saying is complete and utter, utter nonsense. Um, but I am really excited for it, and will I buy a copy i don't know i might i probably will end up waiting until my library has like an ebook or a physical copy i'm not sure um but yeah and the final book on this list also comes out on september 26th and it is time to shine by rachel reed i don't actually know much about this i pretty much um i know it's hockey that that's that that's all i know um but i'm just gonna read the description a merry and bright hockey romance about finding your place, finding your people, and finding your way back to the one you love the most. For Landon Stackhouse, being call called up from the Calgary farm team is exciting and terrifying, even if, as a backup goalie, he rarely leaves the bench. Quiet loner by nature, Landon knows he gives off strong, don't talk to me vibes, and the only player who doesn't seem to no notice is Calgary superstar, young winner Casey Hicks. 
Casey treats Landon like an old friend, even though they've only interacted briefly in the past. He's endlessly charming and completely laid back in a way that Landon absolutely can't relate. They, ha they couldn't have less in common, but Landon needs a place to live that's not a hotel room and Casey has just bought a massive house and hates being alone. As roommates, Casey refuses to be defeated by Landon's one word answer. As friends, Landon comes to notice a few things about Casey, like his wide eyes, easy smile, and sparkling green-blue eyes. Spending the holidays together only intensifies their bromance turned romance. But as a new year approaches, the countdown to the end of Landon's time in Calgary is on. Obviously, we already have had another hockey romance on this list. Hockey romance is my shit at the moment. I love it. So I'm like, it's queer. It's a hockey romance and it's holiday. So I'm like, you best believe I'm gonna be reading this around the holiday time if it if I can handle that much. And this I just feel like is just gonna be like a cute Christmas like hockey romance. And again, sign me up. Like I, I mean, I'm writing my own fucking hockey romance series right now. So give, give me, give me all the hockey. Give me, give me all the hockey. I'm fucking sad that hockey season's over. So when in doubt, I need my fix in books. <laughs> I've got unhinged. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that. But yeah, those are all the books I'm excited for. I am sure there are so many other books that I would be interested in that are coming out within this time frame that either I forgot to put on the list or I haven't heard about, or I maybe didn't realize that it came out within this period of time. Um, but why don't you, in the comments below, if you've made it to this point, let me know what is one book that comes out within the next like three months that you're excited for, or what is a book that has recently come out that you are excited to read that you just haven't got to yet. I'd love to hear that in the comments below. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. and. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!